Hey, welcome back to the shop. This is Zach over at NV Woodworks. Today we're going to be talking about pressure pots, finding and fixing leaks. So pretty common problem. A lot of people, I've gotten a lot of questions about this and, and how, how I identify where the leak is coming from, all that kind of stuff, how to fix it. Uh, so pretty simple fixes for the most part. It's not that difficult. So stick around and I'll kind of show you what I do to find and fix leaks in my pressure pots. All right, so the first thing that you need to do is identify where the leak's coming from. And what I do is I start out by checking the plumbing fittings themselves. Easy way to do this is go grab a spray bottle, put some water in it, and then I use like a dish soap. That, that's usually the best. It's kind of a more soapy, I guess, or more concentrated. Um, I've used hand soap or whatever, but you want to get some soapy water. And what you're going to do is you're going to spray... Uh, this soapy water mixture onto all the joints and I would even suggest spraying the factory fittings too just to make sure. Now what you're looking for is if there's a leak, even a really small one, what's going to happen is that air is going to create soap bubbles around that joint. So you'll pretty easily identify it. Um, that's kind of the first step and, and you want to fix all the plumbing fittings first. All right, so to seal up anything that's going on with your plumbing fittings themselves, there's a couple different ways to do it. Now, a lot of people say, you know, just add more <laughs> Teflon tape. And to be honest, that stuff is by far the least reliable for sealing, you know, joints and plumbing. Um, I did try something that worked pretty good for most cases, but I, I ran into one leak that I just could not fix with this stuff. Um, this is a thread sealant, pipe thread sealant, made by Rector Seal. I'm not sure who came up with that company name, but uh, it works pretty good for most things. But what I'm going to recommend, and I realistically setting up new pressure pots, this is what I'm going to use on all the joints. It's an anaerobic, I'll spell this on the screen, anaerobic pipes, pipe thread sealant. Um, basically, this stuff, I think, is exactly what they use for the factory fittings, the things that you, are really difficult to get broken loose, like they're glued in. This stuff dries hard, and it actually has two advantages. Um, this stuff worked on a leak that I couldn't fix with any other method, um, so it definitely does its job. Um, it's The stuff that I'm using is Loctite Thread Sealant number 545, and I'll put a link to Amazon on my website to this product. Um, worked the best for me. Um, all you do is you put a little bit on the threads and then screw them together, basically. Now, the one thing that the way this works is it hardens or cures in the absence of air. And so it's going to harden and cure in those threads, uh, but it may be a little bit like liquidy on the outside or something like that. So what I recommend, the best thing that I would say is to just put it on and let your pot sit for about three days. And at that point, everything should be cured. But it works the best. And I, like I said, future pressure pots, when I'm putting all the joints together, I'm putting this stuff on and I'm done. Now, because this stuff cures hard, the other issue you run into with plumbing fittings is to get them lined up properly. You know, you got little different gizmos and gadgets, and really you want them to be facing a certain way a lot of times. This stuff will allow you to seal that and also stick the plumbing fitting in the direction that you want without having to over tighten stuff. So again, Loctite 545, this stuff works great. I would recommend that even when you're setting up a pressure pot. Now to move on to the, the lid gasket, I think that a lot of the problems with lid gasket leaks are really stem from a couple different things. One, improper tightening of the screws. There's actually a way that you want to do this when you're tightening down the lid to you know, cast something and, and pressurize it. What you do not want to do is go clockwise or around the circle, you know, tightening one clamp at a time. Uh, similar to if you were changing a tire, you want to do it across from each other at the same time. And so the way that I usually do this, and it actually helps you out when you're trying to get the lid on, is you grab two screws that are opposing each other and screw them at the same time and then do the other ones. And what ends up happening is the force that you're applying is actually going in different directions so your pot doesn't want to turn around on you. So it helps not only to, to do it correctly, but what you're doing is by, by doing it across ways, you're putting even pressure down. Now, if you tighten one and then keep going around the circle, you're kind of putting the pressure 
not evenly on the lid and you could end up with a kind of wonky lid basically. So just doing it the correct way will probably give you better results with your pressure pots and that's the proper way to tighten them. Now having said that, some lids are kind of wonky on their own and what I found is a lot of times if you just change the position of the lid, try different things, pressurize it, usually you're going to find a place where the lid fits the, the pot better. And when you do find that, then mark the side of the pot and the lid so that you have an alignment mark and you put the lid on the same way. That will help tremendously. Now, if you've done all that stuff and you're still having problems with the lid gasket, the last ditch effort that I have for lid gaskets is apply a little bit of petroleum jelly around the, the actual rubber gasket in the lid and then put the lid on and do all that stuff. And usually that will solve any minor leaks uh, that you have remaining in the lid. So I hope that kind of helps out. The last thing is the safety valve and if it's popping off early and, and, and leaking, not, not where it, it's screwed in, but the actual safety valve itself is leaking, um, I would honestly just replace it, go get a new one. Uh, the Harbor Freight models, their max PSI is stated as 60 PSI. That's what I would get is just a replacement safety valve set at 60 PSI. Uh, the, the CA Technologies pots are set at 80. So just whatever your pressure pot max PSI is, just get a new safety valve that's set to that and that should take care of the problem. I have concerns, you know, Harbor Freight isn't necessarily known for having the best possible things on the planet um, quality wise. So that safety valve may not work, or, you know, just, just get a new one, you're better off that way, you know you got a good one. All right, well I hope this was helpful. I know that I get this question a lot and I hope that the video kind of just walking you through, showing you the steps that I take to kind of identify and fix all these problems is helpful and will get you and your pressure pot back to work and casting. So um, again, soapy water will tell you any leak that's going on on the plumbing and hopefully the lid gasket, those little tips. Um, I know that on this pot especially, there's only one way that you can put it on and it seals itself. So hopefully that was helpful. I hope I explained and showed everything in pretty good detail so that you understood it. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, definitely leave those down below. If you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe. We do all kinds of resin casting stuff, tips and tricks, projects, all that. So subscribe, you'll get updates when new videos are posted. Uh, so I guess until next time, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. A company called Rector Seal. I think that's about the worst company name I've ever heard of. Pipe thread sealant from Rector Seal. Rector Seal. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, God.